Hey everyone, welcome back to the other side of weight loss. So I think for this one, you're gonna, you may want to get a paper and pen out because I think there's gonna be a lot of real nuggets in this one because we're talking about the law of attraction, which is always one of my favorite things to talk about. And just how can it, how can we apply manifestation and law of attraction to our own health and our journey through losing weight and just trying to attain, obtain that body that we're, that we're looking for. So with me today is just the absolute expert on this, Christy Whitman. She is a transformational leader, master certified law of attraction coach, energy healer, and the New York Times bestselling author of The Art of Having It All, A Woman's Guide to Unlimited Abundance. Her book is called Quantum, oh, her newest book is called Quantum Success, Seven Essential Laws for a Thriving, Joyful, and Prosperous Relationship relationship with work and money. As the CEO and founder of Quantum Success Coaching Academy, a 12-month law of attraction coaching certification program, Christy has helped thousands of people worldwide to achieve their goals through her empowerment seminars, speeches, coaching sessions, and products. So welcome, Christy. That's a heck of a bio. <laughs> I'm tired. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you having me here. Yes, I'm excited to have you here. I love talking about the law of attraction. I'm a big believer in it, and I know it really changed my life and continues to change my life. So I would love to hear from you. How is it that you stumbled upon it? How did it change your life so much that you're actually now the master certified law of attraction coach. <laughs> well, um, you know, for me, I'll talk just specifically about the area of my weight and my body. Um, all of my life, I was always dieting and yo-yoing. And um, at, I remember in fifth grade feeling oh. that I was chunky. Um, and I actually had somebody come up to me um, when I was in, almost in sixth grade saying, you're chubby. And so I had this, you know, feeling of not being enough and be, not being in the body that I wanted at a very young age. And so when I entered into uh, grade school or excuse me, junior high, I started taking diet pills and I was bulimic and um, I lost a lot of weight and started getting a lot of attention um, because I looked really good. I wasn't very healthy, um, mm -hmm. but I looked really good because I was very thin and I became obsessed with working out. And so I would, you know, eat like 400 calories a day and then, um, you know, work out so that I was calculating how many calories I was burning. I was obsessed, obsessed. Wow. Yeah. And even into high school, you know, would, would do things. I started smoking when I was a junior in high school, just so I could lose weight. I mean, there was a lot of detrimental things that I did to my body just be, so I could either lose weight or, you know, stop the cravings for food or, um, just to try to get my mind off of using food to feel better about myself. And, um, it was around, uh, 22 years ago that I, I, I had, I found my ideal body. Like I created my ideal body. It was a size four. I wasn't obsessed with being a size two. I was, you know, working out, was like taking care of myself. I was eating well. And around that time I started feeling like, you know, I've manifested everything that I've ever wanted, my body, money, career, all this stuff. But I felt so empty inside and started really searching for, I was getting really, really hungry for spiritual knowledge and spiritual connection. And I found myself moving to California and what happened was amazing because I literally just let go of everything. And in letting go of everything, I let go of relationships. I let go of my career. I let go of, um, you know, I got into like $60,000 in debt. I mean, it happened very quickly. Um, and I also gained like 30 pounds. So here I was not a size four anymore. I was a size 10, which was a lot for me because I'm not even five, two. And so I just remember feeling so frustrated because it was like everything got switched from the inside out. And I was wondering like, what is happening here? You know, it's like everything was falling apart. And that's when I got introduced to, I remember sitting in front of my meditation teacher and she told me that thoughts create your reality. And I was like, I mean, this wasn't like, internet time. This wasn't secret was out. I mean, right. this was like <laughs> underground information <Yeah. laughs> that nobody shared, nobody talked about. Right. And right. so when she said this, I was like, wow, that, 
that rings as true to me. I don't know how I know that to be true, but it is. And so she said, we're either repelling things from us or attracting things to us based on our thoughts. And so she had me do an experiment, go home, just pay attention to your thoughts and, you know, start, start looking at where are you critical? Where are you judgmental? What, what kind of thoughts are you thinking about yourself? And so I couldn't believe it because when I first moment, it's like, we all have that moment. We actually start listening to our thoughts mm -hmm. and it's like, wow, I was so negative. And I was not only negative about myself, I was negative about every person I knew. I was negative about the nature of reality. I was negative of God. I was in a boxing ring with God. You know, it was just, everything was so negative and critical and judgmental and comparative and comp competition and, you know, just all of this stuff. So I started to change my thoughts one by one. And I started to learn the practice of meditation and as I was hungry and as I was wanting to know more about this, what makes thoughts create reality, um, started attracting more teachers and more information and more stuff like that to me. And I remember being in the grocery store, just totally frustrated because this is at this point, I'm eating salads and, you know, eating all of this stuff that I know is supposed to be good for me. And then whenever I've lost weight in the past, that's my go-to thing that would do it. And nothing was working. It was like the weight was staying on and it was not budging. And I remember sitting at the grocery store and I saw a um, magazine of Helma Sayek or Selma Hayek. Selma, Selma Hayek. Hayek. <laughs> <laughs> Selma Hayek. And it looking beautiful and, you know, yeah. fit on the cover. And I have a similar body type to her height and that sort of thing. And I was looking at it and I started feeling her energy and I almost started tapping into her thoughts about her body and how she feels about her body. And I was having this like quantum moment, didn't even realize that's what was happening at the time where it was like, I literally like from a holographic perspective was just embodying what it felt like to be not just Selma Hayek, but to be fit and to have the kind of body that she had. And then my cells started waking up because they knew what that felt like. I had been there before. I had had, you know, at different points in times, ups and downs and ups and downs, but that place where I was lower in weight and I felt fit and I felt good, my, my body knew that cellularly. So I started connecting with that feeling as much and as often as I could. And it was amazing. It was like the weight started just shredding wow. off of me. It was like just started dripping. I mean, I remember two weeks into just being really mindful and really vigilant about the energy I brought into my body and, and stopping to, you know, the, the thoughts of I'm not enough or that I'm not thin enough or I'm fat or I'm, whatever it was. Uh, my thighs are big or my whatever and started feeling fit and lean. And I went to go put it on a pair of pants and I was like, they were like dripping off of me. You're like, wow, and, I'm fit and lean. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it, the outer started reflecting what I was feeding my body because what I now know to be true as an expert in law of attraction and the other seven essential laws is that you know our bodies, we're so connected to our bodies that it's the first manifestation that we have when we come into this world of manifestation of physical form. Right. Yeah. And so it is the first thing, like it's easier to shift the state of our bodies and our weight and you know, the, the, every aspect of it, our energy and vitality easier than it is to create money or relationships or anything that's really outside of us. Cause we're really not outside of ourselves. We're connected to it. So our bodies are listening to our commands and our commands are the thoughts that we say about it. If we say, oh, this thing I'm about to eat is really, really bad for me and I'm going to gain weight, our bodies listen to that and then they, it starts to gain weight. You know, It does what it needs to do to go, oh, alert, alert. She's telling us this is bad stuff and I'm going to eat it, right? Or this is really good stuff or the water that we put into our bodies, right? It's like if we give an intention to water, Moto had his book, you know, The Hidden Messages of Water, if we start to intend what our what the water is and then we bring that water into our body and tell our bodies that this is going to be healing or um you know relaxing or full of love our bodies take that in our bodies are constantly listening to the thoughts that we say and command to give that the commands that we give it the emotions that we hold and it is the fastest most amazing thing to be able to shift our bodies with having the exact picture image in our minds of what we want it to look, how we want it to feel. Sometimes it takes some things, action steps um, to shift, 
But for years, I kept my body at my ideal weight without having to be on a certain diet. I gave away, uh, gave up all of the yo-yo stuff. I haven't been on a diet in like, you know, I have a food plan. I have a way of eating that is good for my body that, you know, my body loves. And I definitely work out and exercise because it's, I, I want to, I want to move my body. I'm back in alignment with what my body needs and wants. I get the kind of rest that I need. You know, I treat my body to massages. So there's things I do now, but one thing I do not do is I do not do yo-yo diets. I do not do deprivation. I don't do any of those things. And, you know, I went from gaining weight after my first child to immediately applying law of attraction and dropped all the weight got pregnant very quickly because um, I dropped all the weight and I was all sexy and hot for my husband's attack. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, quickly got yeah. back to my body and then I maintained, I only had gained like 16 pounds with my second son. I was doing squats at the gym the night before I, you know, went into the day, like the, the day of, I went into labor with him and just felt su super healthy and, you know, got back into ideal weight, not obsessively, you know, like, like I used to do it. Um, but it was, it wasn't until about five years ago that all of a sudden I hit an age where my hormones started going out of whack and I all of a sudden started gaining weight. And for me, it was like, okay, I'm not going to start dieting again, you know, and I don't want to buy into the, now that I'm, you know, 45 <laughs> yes. that, you know, my body's going to go to crap because my hormones or because I'm premenopausal or any of those other things. And, um, so I was like, I'm not buying into that. So what do I know to be true? I went and got my hormones tested. I was off of this. My thyroid was off, all that stuff. So I energetically plus attracting the perfect person to help me reset my emotions. And I took some different um, herbs and, and now I'm on different um, minerals, all natural stuff, no medications at all. Um, and now like, a, I think it was about six months ago, went and checked and all my hormone levels, all my blood, estrogen, testosterone, thyroid, everything is back to normal. Wow. And who yeah. is the person? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it's, it's a person I attracted, but, right. it's, but it's also what I did with my mindset. I wouldn't mm -hmm. let my mind and, and my energy, I wouldn't let myself go, oh, okay, well, that's the age I'm at. And now I've got to start taking synthetic hormones or do this or do, or do that. You know, it's like we mm -hmm. each individually from the state that we're in can attract those people that can support us in what we're wanting to, um, you know, the information that we yeah, need it's all yeah. based on attraction. And yeah. now I'm more fit than I've ever, you know, been. And I'm 48 and going on 49. Yeah, you look and, amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would not have guessed you were well, 48. You. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. But now, it, I can just imagine how many women sell like, they can't visualize that body that they're trying to get to. And because they can't visualize it, they self-sabotage or they, they end up going back to like, even though they, they'll might start losing the weight, but then suddenly they self-sabotage and they're starting eating everything. How much of that is they're just manifesting that to happen because they can't even, because that's inside their head is the, still the weight that they're at. You know, well, that, well yeah. that, but there's also blocks. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of women will gain weight because they um, want to do it out of self-protection or, yes. you know, yeah. there, there was a thing with me years ago where I started to um, almost want to gain weight. And that was part of that process of the hormones and all that kind of stuff. And I think I created the hormone issues because I had a man that was attracted to me and I was attracted to him, but I'm very happily married and I certainly didn't want to go down that road. And so I started subconsciously gaining weight, you know, so I wouldn't feel right. attractive right. and yeah. he wouldn't be attracted to me. And, and that kind of broke things up. I mean, not yeah. that there was anything that happened, but you know what I mean? It was like yeah. that just the flirty kind of thing. And it protected me to not go down a road that I didn't want to ever go down because I love my husband and, you know, care about yeah. our relationship and all that. So there are many reasons that women could um, feel that they're being approached by the opposite sex or the same sex. I've been approached by, you know, women too. And I'm like, you yeah. know, thank you, but no thanks. Yeah. Um, don't, don't go down that road. But, uh, you know, there's, th there's, there's this level of self-protection or afraid of being seen or, you know shining too bright or whatever the reasons are, because we all, I mean, 
let's face it, we all know what we need to eat and we all know yeah. how we need to work out. I mean, th they say that, you know, there's the two things that food is even more important than working out. Of course, working out, moving your body in whatever capacity that is, it's huge. But for me, it's the third element. It's about energy. And if we've got blocks that have us continually reaching for, you know, six cups of coffee a day that's sabotaging our weight loss or, you know, messing up our hormones or our adrenal glands or any of that kind of stuff, or we're eating a bunch of sugar or all these other things and we know that it's not the best thing for us. Well, why do we then keep doing it? It really is all about energy because when we are trying to reach for those things, there's something going on inside of us that is not feeling good. So we assign like, okay, if I just eat that cookie or if I just have the next cup of coffee or if I have this, then I'm gonna feel better. And then we have it and then we feel worse about ourselves because we shouldn't have done that and you know, that monkey mind. So it's getting, getting in touch with what are we giving out energetically from our thoughts, from our, from our emotions, because we will attract more of what we give out by law of attraction. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I like, I, I love the law of attraction stuff, but I also think like a lot of what we're being told in the world of law of attraction is just to sit back and visualize and feel what it would feel like. And I feel like where do we take action? Because I know that so many people do the, the boards and the law of attraction stuff and they read the books and they, they meditate and they think about it and nothing happens. That's only one part of the equation. Yes. So, yes. so the law of polarity is one of the laws that I talk about. And, and with the law of polarity is that, you know, there's many aspects. You could have one thing that could be like weather, for example, and on one side you can have extreme hot and the other side you can have extreme cold. When you think about human being wanting to manifest and work with law of attraction, we are both and. We are not just energy and we are not just physical. So you have lots of people in the world that are fit, taking lots of action. They're doing lots of workouts. They're working out. They're you know, doing all sorts of different action, 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 and still not getting the results because the mindset and the energy is not there. And on the other side, you have these people that are oming their way to the you know, top of the hills and reading the books and doing the vision boards and all that kind of stuff. That's the energy work. That's great. But if you're not taking action, nothing's going to happen because we're both and. So we need to work with both the physical and the non-physical. So taking action, getting your butt to the gym and actually getting on a Stairmaster or going to a yoga class or a bar class or walking outside or lifting up a weight it is important because we need to take the action. We can't just sit there and think, oh, I'm thin and, and skinny and all that kind of stuff and then not eat properly. Our bodies actually are physical manifestation and we need to fuel our bodies with proper fruits and vegetables and proteins and, and things like that getting rid of the stuff that harms our bodies like sugar and you know tons of caffeine and stimulants and drugs and, and that sort of type of thing. And so we have to take action and whether it's in our businesses, with our fight, you know, whatever, we have to take that action. But someone that's just taking pure action and yeah. not using it's both and yeah. that's that's the totality of it. Yeah, it took me a long time to to gather that. So I'm glad that you say that because you, you put it so nicely, much better than I could. But yeah, like I had to because I I was really into all the visual stuff. And, and I didn't have the taking action part. And I realized suddenly, I was like, no, no, I got to start taking action on what I'm visualizing. And start moving myself towards that vision. And then everything started to kind of unfold and be brought in. And I always find that it, when things aren't coming my way, it's because one or the other's off. Yeah. And when you're doing like, you know, you have that vision and you feel good about that vision. I always talk about, and I talked about in um, Quantum Success, it's about two things. It's about alignment and then momentum. And just doing alignment, not taking any action, you're not, the, the divine being that you are is individualizing itself through you so that it can create its life experience through you. But you, physical human being, need to partner with it and take the action. And if you're just taking momentum and you're not aligned, you know, it's like yeah. you could be just doing so much and having no specific focus or strategy or anything like that. So it's alignment and momentum, and that's the secret sauce of it all. Yes. So can you explain to those that are, are unfamiliar with this kind of work, what is quantum? 
just even that, like the quant what's quantum success? <laughs> well, when you think of it just from quantum success, right? When yeah. When you think about success, we think about, okay, so this is going to take a while. It's going to be a step-by-step -step process. This has to come between before this, and I have to take these many action steps. You know, it seems like a lot of work and there's a lot of action that has to take, right? Quantum success is evoking the energy in the universe, working with the universal laws, doing the alignment and the momentum. And what happens is that the success is exponential. It's not this like, boop, 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 boop. It's, you know, it's like leapfrogging over the different steps. Doors open. Um, you know, there's more flow. It, there's less effort. There's effort and there's energy that you have to do as far as taking action but there's much less effort because there's this flow of energy. So it's literally um, one of the laws I talk about is a law of pure potentiality. It's, it's, it's connecting with the potential that anything that we've manifested, whether it's a desk, a computer, you know, a shirt we're wearing, a chair we're sitting on, all of that was potentially was at one time energy that was seeking itself to create, be created. And so whatever ideas that we have, whatever money we want, whatever man that we want, whatever it is, whatever health in our bodies or vitality, there is pure potentiality if we're thinking that thought to be able to manifest that in our lives. And then when you tap into that, when you feel that potential and you get excited about that, then, and you're not focused on, well, I can't create that. Who am I to have that? My, my parents were never you know, wealthy or my parents were never thin or my mom struggled with weight or you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm out now 50. I can't have the weight I want or, um, you know, all that limited stuff that blocks us. When you get away from all that and you allow that pure energy of potentiality, then you cannot not take action. It's like, you're so inspired that you take the next step and you take the next step and you find yourself being propelled with this massive, just amount of success. Wow. That's, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> it's like, Okay, I'm going to chew on that one for a yes, little yes. while. <laughs> it's a lot. Yes. So when someone's just starting out in this, is there, <laughs> is there some tools that we could use? to? Because, <laughs> okay, so yeah. is it better to like pick something really small? Because a lot of us will be like, well, I want to be rich. I want to win the lottery. I want to be, I want to lose a hundred pounds, whatever it is, right? Like, those are like the big extremes that we don't believe. And so if we do, if we can't wrap our head around it, we can't believe it. It probably can't happen, right? Like, well, you're not gonna man yeah, you're not going to manifest anything that you do not expect that's going to happen. If you expect okay. things are going to go bad, and you know, and you want things to go good, but your expectations then things going to happen bad, then that's what's going to happen. So it's it's really about where we place our faith, right? We're always pr placing our faith or what we believe or what we trust is going to happen. Are we placing it on what we want or what we don't want? So you say, where's the first place to start? Is anytime you notice yourself feeling bad, you're in lack. Because anytime, we are an unlimited being, whether we're aware of it or not. Anytime we are in our thoughts and our emotions are stuck in fear, resentment, hurt, anger, those are lower level vibrations. Whenever we're thinking thoughts of I can't, I'm not enough, and you know, I don't have what it takes, or fear thoughts, or any of that stuff, we feel bad. So when we feel bad, we're in lack. When we feel good, we're either in satisfaction or abundance. That's just the first thing to know. So when you feel bad, ask yourself in that time, what do I want? Why do I want it? And how do I want to feel? And understand that going after the body that you want or the man or the money or whatever it is, right? It, that those things actually are not our source of happiness or joy or success or abundance that our emotions are. And so we can feel, well, the reason we want anything in this physical universe is because if I think if I get that pile of money, or if I finally get to that weight, or if I finally meet the man of my dreams and get married and have kids, we're, we're signing our happiness or our joy or some kind of essence feeling outside of ourselves. And what happens when we get that money or we lose that weight? I remember so many times thinking, oh, if I just got to this weight and I get to this yeah. weight and I was like, shh, I do it. <laughs> Hmm, I well, still maybe, don't like my body. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still fat or I'm still got big legs or I'm still this mm -hmm. or, you know, and it's like, it's never enough because we're assigning how we want to feel outside of ourselves. So that sense of satisfaction needs to come from within. 
And that needs to come from the thoughts that we think, the feelings that we have. So another thing that I say is watch your words. That's where I had to start. When you are saying, oh, I can't seem to lose weight. Well, what do you think you're going to manifest? You're going to manifest more evidence of you not being able to lose weight. Or I can't seem to you know, get my hormones back on track. Well, then you're not going to find the person and the support and everything that you need to get yourself back on track. We need to be able to shift our language from what we do want, why we want it, and how we do want to feel. Wow. Yeah. And I would think limiting beliefs would have a lot to do with this as well, right? Like just recognizing our limiting beliefs. If you have a limiting belief, once again, you feel bad. Because yeah. limiting beliefs, limitation to a unlimited being, which every single one of us are, feels horrible. And you know by if you have a limiting belief, because as you think about it, as you have a perspective about something, you feel bad. And so that's how you know. It's, you know, it's not like therapy, let's go dig into what all of your limiting beliefs are. The minute, what happens is the minute you set an intention for something, a goal, I want to lose weight, I want to have more energy, I want to improve my hormones, I want to whatever, I want a pile of money, you're at a different vibrational level when you ask for it or intend for it and in the, than in the having of it. Right. So what happens is when we create this intention for something that's not exactly what we have now, what we want, everything that is not of this will come out and it will come up. And those limiting beliefs and all that negativity or that, you know, will come up. And then it's uh, up to us as, de, you know, be applying the law of deliberate creation to say, well, this is what I want. This is why I want it. And this is how I want to feel. And this is what I want to believe. And this is what I want to put my faith in. So that as you're letting go of all that energy of resistance, you're booing up. And now you get into the having place of it. You get into the matching vibrationally. And that's when manifestation happens. Yes. It's, the law, one of the laws that's my favorite, and you know, people talk about law of attraction, and law of attraction is just a mirror. It's like a boomerang. What you send out is coming back. There's nothing you really have to apply for law of attraction. It's in the application of the law of sufficiency and abundance. Because if you look at it from a spectrum, on one end of the spectrum is lack, on the other end of the spectrum is abundance, and right in the middle is satisfaction. It's contentment. It's fulfill fulfillment. It's satisfaction, right? It's, it's sufficiency. And if you're on this side of the, you know, where you don't feel good, you're anything less than satisfied, you're in lack and you don't feel good. Well, you can't attract the things that you want if you're in lack. And even when you get there, if you're still in lack, you're still not going to, it's still not going to be enough, right? I want this because I'm empty. So I want this man to fill me up They get the man. It's like, well, geez, after honeymoon fairy period, that didn't work. I need a new man right? Or I, I lost all that weight and I still feel like I'm not enough. I still don't feel like I'm thin enough or this enough because you're coming from a place of lack. So when you create from a place of positive aspect satisfaction, then you're in the realm of abundance. And when you're in that, that's when the energy is higher, the frequency is higher. And that's when law of attraction is going to bring you the things that you want. Because on this side, it's working all the time. It's bringing you what you want or what you don't want based on what you're asking. And you ask by the vibration that you give out. Yeah. So, yeah. Now you talk about the seven essential laws, which you've already mentioned one, maybe two. <laughs> yeah, two of them. Law of attraction, law of deliberate creation, yes. law of allowing, law of sufficiency and abundance. Okay. Law of potentiality. Law of potentiality. Um, yeah. Law of detachment. What are we missing? Law, law of, of polarity. Law of polarity. So those, those were the laws. You didn't actually call them laws. Only <laughs> called one of them laws. So those are the laws, and that's what's in the Quantum Success book. Yes, all, all of my work, all of my books, um, all of my. I have a coaching certification program where I certify law of attraction coaches. I mean, everything I do is based on those seven essential laws because they're named that because they are essential. It's like knowing the rules of the game. I mean, how right. successful would we be? If you were never to ever see a baseball game and you walk out on a baseball field and you go with your friend, your friend says, we're going to play baseball today. Here's a bat and just hit the ball. And, and so you hit the ball and you stand there and they're like, run. And you run to third base, right? You don't know the rules of the game. How successful are you going to be in playing it? Yeah. But if someone was to sit down with you and say, this is what you're going to do. The pitcher is going to throw to you the ball. You're going to hit it. You're going to get three strikes. If you don't hit it three strikes, you're out. But if you hit it, run to first base. And then if you, you know, the ball doesn't get caught, then you can keep running and then you get a, you get a run. 
you know. So when you know the rules of the game, it's easier to play. I feel like these are the rules to the game of life. Yeah. Did you create these rules yourself? I did not create their universal laws. Their universal laws, yeah. Right. Yeah. I put them together. There's many more laws than seven. But I, I, in practicing and doing 20 plus 20 years of, of work with universal laws, these seven are the keys, like yeah. literally. And if I was going to say, let's make it even more simple, it's not law of attraction that's the most important to learn about. It's the law of sufficiency and abundance. Because when you can start understanding what side of the, of the pole am I on? What side of the spectrum am I on? And if I just, I'm looking to be satisfied, I'm looking to find all the positive aspects about myself, my life today, and you're in that place of abundance, you're sending out really good positive vibes, law of attraction is going to give you more of the same. And as you're doing that, you're in an allowing space, you're detached, you're focusing on the potentiality that exists in the universe and you're deliberately doing it, right? So you're literally evoking all seven laws by applying one. Mm -hmm. So I know you don't have like the for sure answer to this, but I would just love your opinion on it. How much in life is destiny, like predestined by, you know, whatever someone believes, if you believe in God or the universe that like how much of our life is already pre-written compared to how much are we creating? Because I think that, you know, when it comes to law of attraction, when we think about the horrible things that some things that happen to people, I would hate to say that, oh, you've created that yourself. You've brought that on yourself. You know, if you're brutally raped or beaten or something horrific has happened to you, I don't believe that that person necessarily attracted that into their life and that maybe that was something they had to go through, you know, because God wanted them to or whomever. Um, And so I'm always curious because sometimes I, I feel choices to be intuitive, like things that like when you were talking about that, you just felt like you, you were missing something in your own life and you had to take this path and you had to move to California. So that to me is intuition. It's like something's pulling you there. It's like a destiny that you're supposed to get to compared to how much can we manifest kind of what's your opinion on that? So my opinion on that is that there are, there's a reason that us as souls came into the bodies that we came into. And as a soul, we looked down, for example, and said, okay, those dysfunctional parents, that looks like love because I'm going to be able to go into that dysfunction and transcend myself as love and, and be able to remember love. And so what we deem as um, the most horrific things, whether it's rape or abuse or dysfunction in a family, arguing, losing a job, you know, all the different things, right? Um, To the soul, nothing's ever bad and nothing's ever good. It just is all lessons and opportunity for expansion of love. And so when someone, say a woman is raped and she closes down her heart and then at some point she opens up her heart and she can forgive and she can get back into space of forgiving herself and loving herself and really being in a place of acceptance and feeling that space of love, the soul did its job. The soul learned its lesson because it came through on the other end from a space and an expansion of love, more love probably than that woman would have learned about herself or felt about herself had she not gone through that breakthrough and that transformation. So there's, there's those soul lessons that are there. The, the soul, um, doesn't necessarily dust is not destiny to create a rape in order for that to happen. Um, it's, it's, we do attract everything in our lives. Everything is vibrationally. The thing is, before everybody starts yelling, um, <laughs> don't attack me. Don't kill the messenger. No. Nope. Um, it, it is that we don't realize that we're attracting it. Most of us are attracting and creating by a huge default pattern. Most of us have um, totally being in a space of unconsciousness created from the energy that was in our family if there was dysfunction and things like that, if there was a huge victim mentality and a woman, for example, got raped, not knowing that she was playing a victim, um, you know, there was an opportunity for soul growth for her to become more empowered. Right. So um, there's, there's always a, it's always a hard thing. Like how does someone like a child, you know, I had a, my, my son, when he was two months of age, um, had to go through open heart surgery because he had transposition of the great arteries. So he was basically hooked up wrong. And someone could say, oh my God, you know, God flawed him or, you know, how did he attract that? Well, 
with him coming into the family at the time that he did and that happening, my husband grew and his soul's purpose, our relationship grew, I grew, uh, our bond with Maxim, our faith in, you know, universal laws, our faith in manifest manifestality. I mean, our faith in all of it, it, it brought us together as a, a family and, and I don't want to take complete blame. However, um, my focus around the time of conception, my, my best friend, her, her um, nephew was two months of age and having heart surgery. Oh, and, nice. and I said to myself, there's, and I had just my baby Alex, you know, and he was about, I think four, maybe five months old at the time. And I was like, there is no way I'd be ever be able to handle that. I don't know how her brother and, and sister-in-law are handling that. Oh my God, that would be the worst thing ever. Focus, 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 you know, and then I'm getting pregnant literally while this whole thing is happening and, and on total space of fear and soul self is like, you got this. So I'm not saying it's a tit for tat kind of thing, but I do find it very interesting how very interesting. some, yeah, that, <laughs> that was what I was marinating in when he was being created. And then it, I really learned after that, that it's like, wow, if I can go through the suicide of my sister, if I could lose jobs, if a job, if I could go through debt, if I could go through up and down weight, if I could go through literally my son, like almost losing him. And he is just a pure miracle in that story and all that happened in that time. But if I could change the direction of that manifestation and come out in a more positive aspect, um, honestly, there's it, that place of, oh my God, there's no way I would have ever been able to get through it. I know that I can get through it. Right. Yeah. The yeah. strength that I, my soul gave me and the strength that I now feel connected because, to my soul self because of that, I'm a more empowered person because of it. Mm -hmm. So when you're going through a hard time, you can use the law of attraction to get to the other side of that pain, yes. Yeah, yes. no matter what that is. I always like to look at it as, as a human mm -hmm. and not being conscious of all this, but as a human going through something tough, we all have different degrees and levels of whatever that is. But if you can look at it as what is the gift in this? Mm -hmm. Truly, what are you learning about yourself? What is, what is, you know, my, my business a couple of years ago went through a tough time. It went through all this great success and then it started going and I'm like, what am I going to, what, oh my God, I'm, I'm a loser. I mean, you know, it, it, I, I teach law of attraction. How could this be <laughs> happening? You know, but what I gained and the understanding about myself and the abundance I now have and the success I now have because of that time and what I learned it, it helped me. It was like almost five steps forward, two steps back to go 10 steps forward. And what I learned, you know, during that process. So I looked at it as a, as a, as a, as if it's a gift and yeah. what can I learn about myself and what can I learn about what I'm doing or need to be doing. Um, but I truly don't, I believe there's a blueprint, but we're the one that fills in all of the details of, of what the house looks like. Yes. I, I have to completely agree. That's exactly how I think of life is too. That yes, we have things that are predestined, but yet we have a lot of control over what's happening and what's coming into our life at the same time. But we need to learn from the tragedy. We need to learn from the, the hardships because that is where we grow and where we learn the most. If you can take it that way. If you don't, you're going to just have to repeat it anyways. It's just going to come back if you don't learn from that. <laughs> yes. And I prefer the other, uh, after yeah. you're kind of from that, it's like you could just learn from joy and, and yeah. freedom and, and, you know, and cause that's a choice too. Right. And so anything that does happen to us, whether we perceive it as a, str a struggle, a pain, you know, to be able to learn from things through positive aspects and through joy and love, you know, that that's always an option too. And it gets more elegant. Life gets more elegant when you learn this information, start learning how to apply it, start mastering it. And then, um, you know, when contrast does happen, it's like, all right, what are the options? What are the choices? You know, what am I looking at? So that you don't feel like you're stuck in it. Because that's really when, when things happen and you say stuck in it, that's being in lack and limitation. But when you have something that happens going, okay, there are solutions to this. There's options, there's choices, there's things in pot pure potentiality that I haven't even thought of. So what is it that I want? Why do I want it? How do I want to feel? 
And then what are my options and choices? Like, let's mm-hmm. move in that direction. Yeah. It's really about changing your perception, isn't it? It's all about changing your perception. And it's all about our relationship with ourselves, truly, because everything at the cosmic level is a outpicturing of our connection to ourselves and that deep connection to our alignment with our deepest self, with our divine self. And any place that we have blinders or places that are manifesting lack, the divine self doesn't know lack. It doesn't know disease. It doesn't know, um, you know, out of being out of well-being. It knows well-being. It knows love. It knows abundance and success. And that's what each one of us are programmed for, not only at a soul level, but in our heart centers. And, you know, when we can feel the allowing of that and the accepting of that and the knowledge of that, then we can be in alignment with that and then we can manifest that. Yes. Wow. I love it. So if somebody is looking to get more from you, should we be starting with your first book before we jump to the quantum success? Like, do we, is that kind of like an intro to everything? You quantum have to- success gives you the, gives you the information you need as well. Um, yeah. Either one of the books. So there's okay. the art of having it all. There's the quantum success book. Um, you can even go to watchyourwords.com. Yes, yeah, um, so I was going to say that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great place to start because if you're really wanting to master yourself, one one of the things, one of the only things we have control over is what we say, right? Yeah. And what we say either out loud or to ourselves, words have creative power. And what is a thought? What is a perspective? It's a series of thoughts. And so as you start to focus on the thoughts that you say. Um, instead of in, and focusing on thoughts that are empowering instead of ones that are disempowering and you're shifting them, it's a huge release because things like, you know, I can't lose weight or I can't seem to get back in my wellness, you know, that's disempowering instead of shifting it. So what are my options? What are my choices? And there's different phrases and things that we say to ourselves or say out loud that are not empowering us. So I created a 30 day series um, that's complimentary to help people really understand what are the detrimental things that we say, I should do this, you know, I have to do this, I ought to do this, Um, you know, stuck doing this, whatever, those things don't make us feel good. They leave us in that spectrum of lack and limitation versus the other side of abundance. Wow. Yeah. I feel like it's really hard for people to stay in that positive, but I just want to encourage everybody to, to try what she's saying. Take her 30 day um, course. It's free. It's called watchyourwords.com because it's like a muscle. The, once you start to realize and see your thoughts and start to actually pay attention to how, what you're talking about, to what you're saying to yourself all the time, it becomes easier and easier. See, that muscle gets stronger. I mean, I've been working on this for years and I'm so good now at like changing my perception of a shitty situation. If something's happening, I can be like, okay, Let's. How can I change this right now? How could I actually be feeling about this? Is it going to help if I stay mad and ticked off, or could I just let it go and be okay with it? And you start to get better and better at it. So, watchyourwords.com, um, her book, her newest book, Quantum Success, and your website is christywhitman.com. Okay. ChristyWhitman.com. So these will all be in the show notes, of course, for everybody that needs to get more from Christy, which I'm sure you're going to once you've listened to this. And I'm, I was right. You should have a piece of paper and pencil. Because if you didn't, <laughs> you need to re-listen and go back. I feel like I got to go re-listen and write everything down. So I'll just get the book. It's all good. There you <laughs> well, go. It's all written for you. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Christy. I've really appreciated it. I appreciate the invite and I appreciate you having me. So thank you very much. I love this connection and uh, always, always appreciate having this level of depth of of, uh, communication. Yeah, same. Thank you.